Hello, everybody. Welcome to Anxiety Hacks. I'm your host, Kate Hudson Hall, and I'm so pleased that you're here to join me so we can you can learn about anxiety. We can all learn about anxiety in my different guests that I have on today. I have a very special guest today. But before I introduce her, uh, I wanted to mention about my new book called Anxiety Hacks with proven techniques, tools, and tips to calmness. So within the book, it's packed full of many, many different ways to be able to help you to begin to, to, ooh, to feel calmer. And it is, um, it's important, it was important for me to pack in as much information as I could because everybody's different. So what works for some people may not work for other people. And with 284 approximately million people around the globe that have anxiety, oh my gosh, yes, um, it's really important that, you know, that we can learn tools to be able to help ourselves and maybe able to help other people. So if you want to check out my book, it's on Amazon. So if you put anxiety hacks into Amazon, you'll be able to find it. And of course, leave me a review if you if you felt like you would like to, an honest review. Now, my special guest today is Stephanie, Stephanie Webb. Stephanie struggled with anxiety her entire life, but didn't understand what it was until she was in her mid-30s. So that was a long time to be suffering. Yes. Oh my gosh. And she was about to have a breakdown, a breakdown at the time due to stress, the build up of stress from work and school. So she sought help from her doctor and then was on antidepressants for seven years until she started to understand what caused much of her anxiety. And then, which is amazing, we want to hear about that, and then learned how to manage it better. Oh, we want to hear all the fine details, Stephanie. So Stephanie was the host of the Steph Up podcast, and she is also an author of a children's book, What Should Dragons Do? So welcome, Stephanie. It's so great that you could join us. Thank you, Kate. As always, it's wonderful talking to you and seeing your lovely face. <laughs> Thank you. That's very kind. I'm not too sure about that, but thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh. You always look fantastic. <laughs> oh, it's fabulous to have you on the show. So tell us about your, oh my gosh, your difficult time with anxiety all your life. Well, it's funny because as a kid, we didn't know what anxiety was. I don't think I heard about it until mm -hmm. maybe in my late twenties, early thirties, when my friend told me she had anxiety and I thought it was like, well, that's only when you have the panic attacks where it feels like a heart attack. So I don't have that. So I can't have anxiety. Um, so the more that we've learned about it is so helpful to know because, yeah, I've had a few panic attacks where I literally can't breathe, but mostly it has come out in other things like brain fog and anger and digestive issues and yeah, physical. Yeah. Always feeling I was always feeling scared, always feeling critical, like that I was going to, people are criticizing me. Um, so many things that you're talked about, you're talked to about them, right? Like, Stephanie, don't, don't think like that. Stephanie, don't be like this. Stephanie, why can't you think properly? Um, and I didn't know. So I, I thought I had all these separate issues and I was, you know, I guess I'm a mess. I guess I'm a sinner. I guess I'm all this, right? Mm -hmm. And then you find out, oh my goodness, <laughs> this is actually what anxiety is. Anxiety and depression are very kind of similar in how, like I, I've had depression and anxiety and then- or, They're all sort of, they're both sort of intertwined, aren't they? Yeah. And a lot of the same kind of symptoms too. Yes. So um, yeah, it wasn't until I was at a job I was working at a call center and there was just so much information to learn. It was just so much pressure. And I was in school at the time too. And I said, what's going on with me? I can't function. And I was crying every day, breaking down at work. And my one coworker who had depression, she said, you should go see the doctor. You should go on short-term leave. And um, 
that's when I was like, oh my goodness, this is what it is. And so I was put on medication and it just helped my body calm down. Yes. So that then also I was going through therapy so that I could focus more yes. on my thoughts. Yeah. And I grew up in a fundamentalist kind of Christian environment, evangelical. And so not that there's a, there are some churches, there are some people who say mental health is not a thing or you're just sinning. There's all of that, but there's also people who do recognize it is, it is an issue. Um, but it was just a lot of shaming and blaming. And so then I, more anxiety because, oh, yeah, God's yeah, upset with me. I'm sinning. I'm like this. I'm like that. Right. Um, and a lot of people don't like the medication, but I said, it saved my life because yeah. when your body is physically reacting and you don't know why, and then people are mad at you. And then you're just like, your brain can't work. <laughs> you're like, I don't know. And then you're just stressed the whole time. So it just helped my body to just calm down. Yeah. I was so yeah. grateful. <laughs> That's oh, why absolutely. I say like my family was like, why are you on medication? Because it saved my life. And so that's why. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, so you were on that for a, a number of years. Um, and then, so how did you know um, it was time for you to start to wean off that medication? Well, I had actually, I quit the phone, the call center and I, I was living in Toronto at the time and I moved back to the city where I'm from, which is like two hours from Toronto. And I was just off work for a bit. And I was taking that time to read more, to take time, like listening to podcasts, watching YouTube videos on personal development. I wanted to work on things like my attitude and my thoughts and I just started learning more about anxiety and I was doing better because I wasn't in that stressful work environment anymore. So um, I said to my doctor, I, I want to wean off it because I have better techniques now on managing my anxiety. And, um, and it did, it did affect me at some, when people would get really angry or like riled up. I could feel my body reacting and I'd start getting anxious because I hate conflict, controversy, that kind of stuff. It always yeah. makes me panic. And then I was thinking, oh, that's interesting because they say, listen to your body. Yeah. So, oh, okay. So that's why I feel like that when people are like that. Okay. How can I work on this? And so it was just a lot of trying yeah. different things, listening to different things, even doing my podcast. I spoke to a lot of life coaches and therapists and authors, and there was just so much I learned in that process. It was yeah. amazing. So it was like basically getting therapy for free. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, I was glad. Yeah. And so, um, well, so what, what tools have you, um, you know, who have you learned along the way? Um, I started out, uh, learning about affirmations. Oh, we love affirmations. I talk about yes. them in the book. Oh, yes, yes. you do. <laughs> <laughs> and because I, the way I grew up was in a very negative, judgmental, critical environment. So it was always, I was always putting myself down and I knew I had heard a sermon one time that, you know, stop it, stop the negative thoughts when it happens. And because you just keep spiraling. So I kind of had learned a little bit of that, but I still spoke negatively about myself. And I was so used to people treating me like that as well. Yes. And um, so the affirmations felt weird at first. Cause I was like, what do I say? And then I found other affirmations, but they're, you know, if other people are writing them, it might not be exactly what you want to say. It's good to have it in your own voice. So an affirmation for people that don't know, an affirmation is a short, simple phrase that you would repeat to yourself over and over and over again. Sort of similar to, you know, a hundred times is good a day. When I say that to my clients, they're, what? 
<laughs> but if you break it down and do it in blocks of say 10 or 20, it doesn't take you very long at all. So you have a good, positive, simple phrase, preferably in your own wording, but it's got to be in the positive. So it's working with that part of your mind. And as you repeat it over and over again, that part of your mind going, why does why do they keep repeating this? Oh, OK, so this is the direction that they want me to help them go in. And so it's not only getting you consciously to focus on that that new pathway, but it's also working unconsciously, working your subconscious mind as well. So it's extremely powerful. Yes. And I've started learning that. Um, I know in your book, Bulimia Sucks, you talk about how we reframe. Yes. And also, because I would be like, oh, my body, oh, I'm chubby, oh, this and that. And my friend said, why don't you say, I love my body. Thank you, body, for what mm. you've done for me. And mm. she goes, as you do that, you'll start to love your body more. And then you'll start to take care of it better, eating healthier, exercising. And um, I'm still working on that. <laughs> um, but I do notice that after a while, you start to appreciate the things that before you hated. Yeah. And it's just like when they say appreciate what you have rather than like you can long, you can work towards things. But if you're not grateful for what you have, then you're just like angry and, oh, I will only be happy when I get that. Yeah. And yeah. so I'm working like the thought process and reprogramming my mind is huge and it's such a process, but it's amazing. Yeah. And it's small steps for me because I'm still working through so much. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. But it's taking it step by step, isn't it? And yes. figuring out how, you know, what works for you and how you can do that. You know, yes. what's your next step? And also the meditation. I mean, I'm not that good at it yet, <laughs> but um, I noticed even, I think I was doing, I had a job interview or something and I was so, I was like, my, my brain is in a fog and I don't know. And I thought, okay, you know what? I'm going to take five minutes and just sit here and just, and then thoughts started flowing and it went well. And I was thinking, wow, oh. to take that time right before something. Yeah. Clears absolutely. your mind. Yeah. So that helps as well with anxiety. When I start to feel something, like sit with the feelings, just like. What is it? The vagus nerve, the vagus something? Yeah, the vagus nerve, yeah. <laughs> Calms with, with the breathing. That affects the vagus nerve, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, the amygdala as well and the prefrontal cortex. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Also uh, worrying about the future. Uh, yeah, that's a big part of it, isn't it? Yeah, like what could happen. I remember getting called in, like if my manager would say, Stephanie, can I talk to you? And all of a sudden I'd start panicking, right? I'm thinking, oh no, I'm in trouble. Oh no, what if I lose my job? Oh no. And then I, I, I've read things where people say, what if it's the best news ever? And a lot of times it's just like, hey, can you do this? Yeah. <laughs> it's not been as bad as we expect it to be. And that's where the anxiety comes from these thoughts of what the worst possible scenario, rather than just like, maybe the best possible scenario or okay, no problem. It's nothing really. So I used to do that a lot. Always worst case scenario. Yeah. And it's starting to be aware of that, those thoughts that you have consciously yes. aware of those thoughts that you have and, and, and starting to do something different. You know, another way that you could work with those thoughts is with mindfulness and starting to turn towards those difficult feelings that you're having. Um, um yeah have you used mindfulness before? yeah I'm still I'm still working on those things lately uh it's it's really hard around this time of year when it gets to be winter um like seasonal affective disorder and yeah. all this and I, I get really triggered so I some days I just want to hide out and I just cry a lot and I'm like damn it I was doing so well it feels like three steps forward two steps back sometimes yeah but then you know, you're reminded I am moving forward. This is just, maybe I'm triggered by something, something happens or it's the weather or just, I don't know, but just because you have those moments again, doesn't mean every, all the work you've done is gone. It means 
And I think, have... you know, when you're when you're in the depths of that, that's what you feel. You know, you've been a feel of failure. But what's really important to understand in any sort of recovery is that that is, you know, that is part of recovery is to, you know, to fail. So you've got to learn to, you know, just to let that go. And that's OK. Tomorrow is a fresh new day. You can get back on, the, you know, back, get back on the horse if you had a horse yeah. and a saddle. Another thing I I noticed was also, and I mean, some people will say, don't go into your past, but I mean, I find it helpful. I think we kind of need to, in order to move forward. And I was in an angry stage as I under, as I learned a lot of what I grew up with has affected me, how that actually caused my anxiety. Well, cause um, people say you you, external things shouldn't cause your anxiety because it's how we deal with it but if you don't know that if you grow up in a certain way you don't know and until you don't know it is what causes your anxiety (laughs) well absolutely uh, it is it's starting to slow your mind down and when you have those difficult thoughts and feelings that fire up your anxiety it's like well hang on a minute what was I just thinking about or what um did I see something or had I said something to myself that maybe is the trigger that's fired off your anxiety behavior patterns? So it's taking yourself back. Well, hang on. What was, you know, what was going on just before? Did somebody say something to me that's kind of, or did I hear something or see something? So it's kind of understanding more and beginning to be aware of those triggers yeah. that, that send you down into that downward spiral. Well, and it's funny because I remember people would would ask me, why are you having a panic attack? Literally nothing happened. And then you feel shame, right? Or I don't know, I guess what's wrong with me. But it could be something as you saw somebody that reminded you of somebody yeah. years ago that bullied you or you smelled something. Like there's so many different things that are my, we don't even know sometimes, but our body remembers. And so- That was so helpful to learn that your body is remembering things you might not even remember. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you know, and it's that knowledge is so helpful. (laughs) Yeah. Sorry. Tuning into your five senses. And like you say, you you could smell something, you know, that is an anchor from your past. And an anchor is, you know, uh, um, something that reminds you of of some past experience. So, for example, if you, for some people, if they smell, freshly mowed lawn then oh that reminds me of when I was young and my dad used to mow the lawn um or cut the grass or however you like to say it (laughs) we have a nice mower over here I know you've cut the grass um and so um it's starting to be aware of those five senses and maybe the your triggers your anchors that cause the triggers to fire up and those five senses are being able to see something, being able to hear something, being able to maybe it's something somebody said to you, or like you say, um, to have smelt something. But it all could also be you could eat something, and then that reminds you of something that wasn't very nice in in the past. Yeah, that could fire off your trigger. One thing that also helped me was understanding um, we attach emotions to things. And it's not necessarily even, well, there is no emotion to things. So I like to use income tax, for example, when income tax comes, we're all like, oh, I hate income tax. Oh, I'm anxious. But income tax is just a thing. Some people might enjoy it, right? Um, But if you've had a negative experience with it, or you find it stressful, then you're, you're automatically saying this is a negative and this is causing anxiety. And uh, I I do that all the time when, you know, if I have to write somebody back and it's not comfortable or if I have to do a resume or something, it's, oh, I have to do this thing. And then it causes me anxiety and I put it off. But which I think many people do. Yeah. Yes. (laughs) But adding, you know, somebody said, well, instead of looking, just just do it, just do it without even thinking about it. Or um, start to get excited, like turn it around. Yeah. Like, oh, so imagine fine. that you're somebody else that's really that gets really excited about doing their income tax. Yes, 
<laughs> so I'm still working on that because sometimes <laughs> just trying to find that one person. But there will be <laughs> that one person out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, yes, I know what you mean. I just didn't mind this week. Ew. Um. <laughs> so um. So what other tools have helped you? Um. Well, therapy. I love therapy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. I guess, well, and they say not every therapist is a good therapist and you have to find, and sometimes you don't click with a therapist or, yeah. but, or even just a life coach and, you know, depending on what people need, I found having a life coach was helpful because they're helping me to motivate and helping me when I start going down the spiral, they're, they, they're a third party that's like sees it for what it is. And so I, I love that. I need that help. Um, I also found actually setting boundaries, healthy boundaries yeah. is huge because when you don't have those healthy boundaries and then people will step over them. And I always got stepped on by people and used yeah. because I didn't understand how to do that. And I thought, yeah, and understand okay. about boundaries and understand that we have boundaries and sometimes they get, you know, sometimes they, they get distorted for whatever reason. And I think a very good example of that for me is after I was sexually abused when I was nine, then I, and I didn't, I think because I didn't have a father figure because he died when I was two. So I didn't have a father figure to sort of like help to guide me in that direction. So I was again, twice physically abused by a male because, and I also think, so, you know, my boundaries were, had been kind of distorted in a sense, the way I was viewing my myself. Right. And that can cause anxiety so much because you're yeah. you're angry, you're you're stressed because people are doing things to you, and sometimes you don't even understand it. If you don't, yeah, and you don't right? like it, you know you don't like it, but that part of you thinks that it's the norm because yes. there isn't a boundary there. So it's beginning to be aware of those, and then drawing the boundary closer and making that conscious effort. Oh my gosh, no, you know. I'm not going to Well, get... and for me, it was also the religion I grew up with. There was, it, it's, there's a lot of manipulation actually in like control. So it was, well, be nice, you know, um, which is a good thing, but if you're just being nice and letting people walk all over you or, you know, when men are being creepy and you're just supposed to be nice like no like we we weren't taught to stand up for ourselves mm -hmm. and also they they use god like well do this for god even though you're like that's not what i want to do and i hate doing this and so a lot of my religion was also in that so i, I don't want to disappoint god i don't want to be yeah. sinning i don't you know so yeah yeah, it's very huge skewed. yeah. for a and lot I, of people as well yeah and the church does it you know but I, I also found actually, I went through a process called deconstruction, which is like looking at your faith and challenging and questioning and kind of like, I don't, Ooh, I don't like this aspect. This is harmful and stuff like that. Um, it caused a lot of depression in my life. Cause you're just, everything that you grew up with is just like, whoa, I don't know anything anymore, but yeah. it's also helpful because I feel less stressed about all of that, all that pressure from people in the church, all of that stuff. I'm just like, I feel freer. And mm. that also helped with the anxiety. Oh, yes. So for anyone who grew up in a fundamentalist religion, there's probably a lot of anxiety there. And I actually see it in family. Yeah. And they won't acknowledge it. And I'm thinking, oh, this is, this is sad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you hear that from people? Like, does Yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of talk now about re religious trauma and um, there's therapists who deal with religious trauma. So. Mm -hmm. So oh, yes. to that. <laughs> oh yes. I know all about that. Um, yeah. So um, what's some parting advice that you would uh, like to share with the readers about their, their struggles with their anxiety? Oh, get as much information as you can. I mean, I found podcasts so helpful. 
Um, reading books as well. Definitely read Kate's book. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, <laughs> listen to Kate's podcast. <laughs> oh, bless you. Um, for me, I, I like a mixture of both. I'm not like all reading or I, I find podcasts helpful because I am an auditory learner um, yeah. or ebook. Um, if you listen, oops, if you listen to books on Kindle. Yes. Um, some people find that helpful too. And, and I think you're right. It's getting, you know, it's getting the knowledge um, and figuring out, you know, about yourself, learning about yourself, and then having those tools to be able to work with the difficult, you know, difficulties that you're having. You and, know, and so getting that knowledge by books and podcasts and things. So, yes, absolutely. And friends. I've realized that certain friends would gaslight or just it was constantly frustrating and so I'd get stressed over that and then you realize this is just not your person and so you kind of find new people to become friends with and you feel safer with them you feel like they yeah. understand me and so I found that helpful too because after a while you realize this person's always putting me down or this person doesn't believe anything I say and is always mm. saying, no, Stephanie, you're wrong. And I think that's my experience. Don't tell me that it's wrong because you believe that this doesn't happen. It does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. And I think that's a very good point. People need to, you know, just spend time around the people that appreciate them and that make them feel safe. You know, yes. I think we, you know that, that takes a learning we're not we're not born with that learning you know and, and for some you get to a certain age and it's like actually that that friend is doesn't make me feel very, very good like you say because of they're always putting you down or once in a while even making a comment um and maybe doing other things and it's starting to think well do you know what you know this person's causing me anxiety so I think I prefer not to spend any time with them and starting to find you know new people that you do feel comfortable with yeah oh there was one more thing too um when you're around certain people like for me it's one of my parents and so I always said my dad causes me anxiety and people would say he can't cause your anxiety that's you can choose not to let that affect you which is true but if you don't know how to do that if you don't know what that means, I used to get told that all the time. Just don't let it bother you. You know, that doesn't make any sense though, does it? Because no, you, you and I was like, wouldn't. I don't know wouldn't. how Yeah, I, my body reacts automatically because I'm so triggered because it was my whole childhood. So when people just say that flippantly, I understand that they're trying to help. But if I had to search out, what does that mean? How do I do this? Because nobody really... They would just give me this simple answer. And I'm like, but what do you mean? I don't understand. <laughs> and what do you right? understand about that now? Well, I like I like to look, look at a lot of personal development stuff. And they talk about finding your peace within yourself and really working. So when I would hear my dad get all, like he loves to argue, especially the, um, religion and politics his favorite things ever to talk about. Um, and I start getting like anxious and riled up and I was like, wait, that's his problem. I'm not going to let his energy affect me. And I think learning about the different energies also helped me understand because I'm a highly sensitive person. So I feel things maybe more deeply than somebody who's not. So somebody else who'd be like, Okay, sure. It, it doesn't bother them, but for me, I can I can feel his angry energy, yeah. and it affects me. Yeah. So it was like, how do I stop that from entering my my energy zone? <laughs> um, so you put yourself in a bubble. Yes, I've 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 done that kind of thing, or just like really, while he's ranting, I'll just be like quiet and just think of happy things or <laughs> like I don't know I use different techniques sometimes yeah, good it, good you know because yeah. that's you know we were talking about anchors earlier and that is an anchor from when you were younger and he probably used to do that then which would yes. make you bring up those difficult anxious feelings uncomfortable feelings and now you're an adult 
even though it shouldn't affect you in that same situation when he starts to you know to rant and rave about politics and religion it's going to bring up those same feelings Yep. And because it's your parent, it, it's, mm. it's deeper than somebody who just. Yeah, absolutely. So him. it's more intense, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Much more intense. So it's having the tools to be able to know how to deal with that. And for you, one of them is to, you know, to bring up that barrier, that barrier of protection, which yeah. is excellent. And for me, you know, if a client came to me with a, with a situation like that, there's certain techniques there's particularly a, a really excellent neuro-linguistic programming technique to help people be able to um, break that link between that past experience and the feelings that are coming up now. Um, and to be able to um, have that past memory, but not have the same link. So when you're in that same situation, those feelings won't be coming up, those same feelings. Um, but also, like you say, it's like, you know, surrounding yourself in, you know, positivity and somehow, like I sometimes suggest to my clients to bring a, imagine a big bubble, like a big ball all the way around you. And so no negative negativity can get in. You know, imagine the wall is like four feet thick. And so nothing, you're completely isolated in this bubble and secure and safe. So whatever somebody says, nothing is going to get in there. And you can be in there, a bubble all calm and, and relaxed. And, and everybody can do whatever they like on the outside. Say whatever they like, but you're not going to let anything in. So it's using your visualization, your imagination, and getting yourself to help you, help yourself to be able to stay. Right. Safe. And it works. My, I mean, it sounds to people who didn't grow up like that or who, who, some people call it like woo-woo, you know, oh, just visualize and you'll be a millionaire. Like, you know how there's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's some of that talk that goes around, but it really does help because what you focus on, what your thoughts are, how you see things will affect your life. And mm -hmm. I was never taught that really. And I'm just like, oh my goodness, I can affect, I can change my life in a positive way myself rather than just praying to God for it. Like, I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Unless we hear it or we're taught it, we just think we've got to listen and believe everything that we tell ourselves and live our lives trying to navigate through that dark, murky pond. Yeah. Oh, Stephanie, this has been fascinating. Yeah, it's been so much fun. I love talking about this stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for joining us. It's been thank just you you know, for you to share your sincere honesty with us, you know, this genuine honesty about what you have been through and how you're still, you know, working through and doing really well, you know, navigating your way through to uh, to free yourself and have yeah. like really powerful tools to be able to deal with your anxiety. So thank you so much. Thanks, Kate. And can I just plug my book? <gasps> and tell us about your book. <laughs> So what you should drag people do? on YouTube? Oh. There's an image um, and beautiful image of the book cover. What should dragons do? And um, well, you wrote an amazing review for me on Amazon UK. <laughs> yeah, on the .co.uk. Oh no, you did a video. You did a audio. Oh, yeah. I did one of my video reviews. Yeah, you oh, did. Got a video review. That was so kind of you. <laughs> but so it's the a book is a... it's a beautiful book though. Thank Stunning. you. It's a story of dragon who lives with her two roommates and she gets angry at little tiny things. And it was like, how can she respond in a better way? Um, it's just situation, like the tiniest things that we get angry. Right. And, and people are like, why are you so freaking out? But I mean, if you were to go deeper into it, there's issues with dragon, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. There's deeper issues as to why she's angry and there's triggers, but I don't go into that. It's just like, how can you respond in kindness? So. Yeah, it's beautiful. It really is. And how can people find it? Um, you can find it on Amazon through uh, my website, stephanieannweb.com. Right. Or .ca, I think, maybe. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Canada, so it's probably .ca. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think Amazon's the easiest. <laughs> yes, yeah. So everybody needs to go 
and and have a look at the book and buy the book because it is it's beautiful. Thank um, you. Art, heartwarming book, but also you know that that you know kids can learn from as well. So mm -hmm. that's what it's all about. It's beautiful. So check it out. Thank you, Kate. This is so much fun. It's always a pleasure talking with you. Oh, thank you for joining us, Stephanie. So that's all for today's episode. And before we go, make sure that you subscribe to the podcast on whatever platform you listen. And of course, leave us a five-star review if you feel like it. We would welcome that. <laughs> so thank you for listening, everybody. And I'll speak to you in the next episode.